Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Shockwave48 here. Welcome back to more information of My Hero Academia Season 6, Chapter 368. And today, it's going to be amazing to hear from this information of My Hero Academia Season 6 because we're like a couple of minutes, a couple of days away before it begins. And so we're, we're pretty much prepared and everything. We saw the movie, we saw Season 5, and it was great. But now, now it's time for the big, big finale. Because we noticed that Deku is off the chart. He's fully prepared to rate, take out Shigaraki. And he's have a game plan to stop him once and for all. And also, we got the second user's quirk. And we don't know what his quirk is. But we're going to see and find out what it is from this chapter of My Hero Dating Season 6. So let's see when we get some intel what's going on in this chapter. And at the end of the video, I will describe my thoughts on this chapter. Alright, so without further ado, let's get right to the video. Spoilers are here early, and we have the reveal of the second One For All user's quirk, all in this chapter of My Hero Academia, so sit tight right there. But quickly, I just want to say that if you're just returning to this channel after a break, because I took a break definitely myself and I understand, or if you're a new viewer, please hit that subscribe button because we're going to be having a lot of brand new content as the season comes out in a couple days, and we're going to continue the daily upload streak all the way to the end of the year if possible, maybe with a couple little one or two day breaks here or there, but I'd really appreciate if you guys subscribe just so you can stay tuned for all the amazing content that's coming. That's all though, let's get straight into the chapter and thank you to Justice, Rukasu, and Dobby's pole dance for all the information on the leaks and let's get straight into it. So, chapter 368 is titled Roaring One for All. So according to okay. Rukasu, the chapter begins with All for One saying that Shigaraki is no more because they've fused and somehow, probably because he's lived for a longer time, All for One's original personality remains stronger. And on the first page, we do see Deku standing there, right? Like at the end of last chapter when he was wrapped in Black Whip and ready to go with eyes full of fury. And Mirio kind of looks on confused like that what's look going on with Deku looks and amazing. all these different quirks. Because I don't think Mirio really has a lowdown on everything that's going on with Deku and all those different quirks. So to him, this is kind of like, what is, what, what's going on here? You really are the chosen one. Like, okay. And this is when we see within the all for one vestige inside of the vestige roll on the second page, we can see that Tenko's head is actually starting to come out of All For One's chest. Now, in the Vestige world before, we saw that it looked like All For One was pretty much taking over Tamora's body, or, or more or less growing out of Tamora's body. Now we can more or less see that in the All For One Vestige world, or in the Tamora Shigaraki Vestige world, it's pretty much just All For One there, right? But now, instead of him growing out of Shigaraki, we see Tenko with white hair, a little young Tenko with rage in his face, growing out of all for one. And this is when Mirio intervenes, saying that Tomorrow That's All weird. For One reacted very strangely to something that he said earlier, as if he'd been possessed by an angry child. This is why he thinks that there's not a perfect fusion actually going on, and that actually, Shigaraki and All For One are unstable. And though Deku did look a little shaken at first when All For One was like, yeah, no, he's completely gone, Deku does look like surprised or like renewed when he does hear from Mirio that that did happen earlier earlier, right, with the inner Tenko kind of screaming out of All For One's body, or I guess Shigaraki's body. So it's at this point in the chapter where Nana looks at Kotaro, which is Tenko's dad, of course, on Tamora's arm, and they lock eyes. And here is the thing now, because in my last video, I question whether or not All For One can see the different vestiges behind Deku. And here we at least get confirmation that the versions of his family that are growing from his hands they, at the very least, can seemingly see Nana and the other vestiges. Well, really, if you want to take it as, like, direct as possible from the page, they can at least see Nana, or Kotaro can at least see Nana. It's the only head that looked up, but that tells us that these heads have, like, a will of their own, which adds a whole other level of horror to this, right? Because how did Shigaraki do that? They're not just like fingers and meat puppets that look like his parents. His dad's meat puppet on his finger looked up at Nana, right? At her vestige. That's all creepy. All on its own. That's not something that Shigaraki did. So oh. what does that imply about like that meat puppet? Is it actually Kotaro's soul in there somehow? Like what is going on there? That That is one of the weirder parts of the chapter for me. Very I, not weird. Not in a bad way. I find that extremely interesting. There's that a lot be that you can draw from that. 
but that it's like was it has a mind that happened in the chapter, right? And I'm sure we'll get way more clarity once the full chapter is out in full translation. When we're reading spoilers like this, there tends to be a lot of questions because we're just reading it in Japanese and summaries on it. But that was a really, really interesting part of the chapter that I just wanted to highlight real quick because because of that, Nana confirms that Shigaraki is still alive, right? And after that, Tamora All for One jumps, and this simple movement makes the entire flying UA base quake. And this is because Shigaraki is done playing. He's been getting thrown around by Deku for a couple pages here, and it's not really kind of the vibe of how the fight has been going so far. So Shigaraki says, hey, this is enough. This is done. It's time for me to steal one for all. And we do see that the entire UA sky base gets tilted, right? It gets tilted to the side and kind of drops down a little tiny bit as Shigaraki jumps as hard as he possibly can. And now the thing is, UA actually isn't that high above the ocean. Like we can see the ocean under UA and it is high up there, but it's not like above the clouds or anything, you know what I mean? Like, it's not as high as like a plane would high. be, I would say, <laughs> if it real. was flying over the ocean. So we are gonna have to keep track of what's going on there with UA and its altitude, right? Because that is likely gonna be a problem if UA does end up crashing. But at the very least, if it crashes, it's gonna crash into the ocean, right? And I'm sure a lot of that bottom rock layer will actually still stay solid if it does fall. And that might actually be part of the design of UA. Now, here's where things start getting nutty in this chapter of My Hero Academia. Now, you know how All For One or Shigaraki can use all these various different quirks, but one of the biggest benefits of All For One is the ability to combine the different quirks, right? So you could use is two quirks possible? together and get a very different effect or just a power. way cooler effect it's than what you would have gotten awesome. from just using one or the other quirk. Shigaraki comes flying in and hits Deku with a high-powered smash destroying the area all around them, just sending rubble and pieces flying everywhere. Deku just completely tanks it. Like, it, it just doesn't affect him at all, pretty much. He just looks at Shigaraki like, boy, you're gonna need more than that to be me. Okay. And this is when Deku does something <laughs> all that right. literally never seen now him things do. Now things are starting to get interesting. For the first time and even creates an entirely new move. Deku yells and says that he won't let everything go the way All For One wants and ties up one of Shigaraki's arms, not with Black Whip, but with a new combination that he calls Black Chain. And that's a combination that's between Fajin and Black Whip. And this is where the true know, Deku of Deku actually do getting that. all these different quirks is really going to come into play. Because a lot of people will tell you these quirks are bad and these quirks, you know, uh, the quirks suck. But once they're able to be used together, right? It's going to really, really shine, I think. And the first example of this is this black chain quirk. It looks like a literal black energy chain surrounded in Fajin energy wraps around Shigaraki's arm. And it is just locked on. Deku then uses the chain to throw Tamora all for one. Black Adam, you can be the destroyer of this world, or you can be its savior, Black Adam. I can't take it anymore, Mr. Nibbles. It's always, yo, Death Knight, buff my armor. Hey, Death Knight, get yourself sacrificed. But he quickly breaks free, saying that even if it's a stronger version, he won't fall for the same trick twice. And this is when the second user appears behind Deku, saying that if he's gonna use his quirk, he needs to end this quickly. And that's right, folks. In this chapter, we do have the reveal of the second user's quirk. Okay. You ready for it? Let's yeah. do it. So first off, very quickly, we learn that if Deku doesn't defeat Tamora All For One in five minutes, apparently the world is doomed, according to All For One. Deku five then minutes. assumes a posture in which he holds his own right hand and says, the seconds, transmission. And in the next second, Tamora is hit seemingly out of nowhere. Like he's literally standing on a flying piece of rubble and then suddenly time more or less stops, let's assume, right? Like as far as as far as the animation here is gonna go, this is gonna happen so fast that it doesn't make any sense. But imagine like how Deku more or less teleported right in front Actually, of Flight like before that he covered that him movie. in blows, but he covered him in blows before Deku even appeared there, right? Like Flecturn was hit by all these different attacks and he was looking around on his body like, wait a minute, what just hit me? Where is Deku? And he didn't even realize that Deku was standing right in front of him, getting ready to hit him with another punch because that's how fast Deku was moving. Deku uses the second user's quirk and something here happens so fast that Shigaraki is thrown upwards faster than the sound of the impact 
as noticed by Mirio. So Shigaraki's very confused and doesn't understand where the attack that just kind of hit him upwards came from, and he realizes that it was much stronger than the energy that covered his body before, which was Black Whip or the Fajin energy, whichever you want to infer for that to be. But that's when All for One thinks, no, it can't be, no, no, no. No, 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 no. And then Deku just appears, right? With unseen speed ever before by Deku. He just appears in front of Shigaraki with a punch already in his stomach, getting ready to launch him, right? But as he's doing this, he's activating the second user's quirk. And as his punch is following through, he's going through different gears. And when I say gears, the way that transmission works more or less is that there are different gears that the quirk can make a person go through when they're engaging in movement, right? So if Deku punches somebody, if he doesn't use the quirk on them, they're considered to be in first gear, right? But if he punches someone and wants them to move faster after he punches them, he could put them into second gear. And yeah, that's kind of like it sounds from One Piece, right? Where Luffy goes second gear and he moves faster. But when right. Deku hits someone, it's kind of the opposite here, right? Because Deku is punching the person, putting them in second gear. And because they're in second gear, they're going flying way faster than they would from a normal Deku punch. So as far as we've seen in the chapter, there are up to five different gears or five different speeds that Deku can use on a person. And Deku can more or less use this transmission quirk to completely control the speed at which someone else is moving. But I don't think he Impressive. can just completely stop them, right? I think he can only speed them up. So Deku, when he's punching Shigaraki in this chapter, goes through the different gears, right? And it sounds like Luffy is fighting a big villain because he literally goes gear second, third, fourth, fifth. And while the punch that Deku does on Shigaraki is only in the second highest speed that we've seen so far, it sends Shigaraki absolutely flying. Like it literally looks like the punch that All Might did against the Nomu in USJ with mm -hmm. like how All Might punched them in the stomach and it seems like space and everything just kind of bend it around them as he sent the Nomu flying through the USJ center, just absolutely destroying that roof, right? In a really, really awesome and impressive way. It seems like Deku is finally going through that moment. And I finally realized actually just a second ago what Shigaraki's hand map is supposed to be. He's supposed to look like the big Nomu that fought All Might in the USJ incident, right? This whole arc, they're redoing the USJ incident by going to the various different areas. Shigaraki is kind of the big anti-Deku, right? That they created specifically to counter Deku. And now he has that kind of weird finger beak on his face, right? And now Deku has kind of launched him in the air, just like All Might launched the USJ Nomu. And as Shigaraki gets launched in the air so fast that he doesn't know what direction he's going, pretty much it looks like, and gets spun around, Deku moves at a ridiculous speed again, getting behind Shigaraki in the air, right? Like going to the destination that Shigaraki oh was goodness. flying towards before he even gets there himself and prepares a Detroit Smash at overdrive speed, which is the highest speed that the second user's quirk can go. And during this, the second user of One For All says that the current Izuku Midoriya is able to use 120% of One For All. Meaning because oh my of all the goodness, different boosts reaching and that he has, like Fajin or the second user's quirk, he's effectively able to get an extra 20% worth of power out of One For All that he wouldn't have had before. And brother, let me tell you, that 20% probably makes a very, very, very big difference here because it's absolutely wiping the floor with Shigaraki right now. Okay, Deck is, is my favorite now. And this is when the user comes out in best He's a beast. and says, Brother, let's call it a day. And Deku hits Shigaraki with a massive, amazing Detroit smash, and that is the end of the chapter. And just like how we saw, you remember like in season four of the anime, when Deku hit Shigaraki with that mm. amazing, like horrifying, downward series of Detroit smashes with a lightning bolt struck behind him. And we saw Deku looking down at Overhaul and Overhaul's like close up eye looking up at Deku in horror. We see the same thing here, right? With the first user looking down at All For One within Shigaraki and All For One looking up, right? And seeing him. So I think that is confirmation that they are seeing each other or at least it's like some sort of symbolism going on right here, right? Because Deku is, it, it's horrifying. When you see the art on these pages and when it's fully out, it's going to be amazing. I'm really clearly hype about all the awesome stuff that happened in this chapter. So I'll see you guys a little later today with an explain video talking a little more in depth about. All right, guys, this chapter and this new season has got me extremely goosebumps on me, guys.
I'm like, wow. I didn't know Deku actually can actually like combine quirks. I didn't know he could actually get more powerful and then use 120% of his power. I mean, he, he, he can't, he's amazing, guys. I mean, Deku is amazing. You can't not lie. You, you can't tell yourself that if you're going to be number one hero, you got to be the best. And I'm in my theory, guys, I think Deku will become the number one hero in the future because the way it just happened in this chapter is totally amazing. And I really, really am happy. I'm a big, huge Deku fan. And... <laughs> I don't know how the I don't know why the battle had to end, but it, it seemed like a good idea to retreat because we already know how powerful Shigaraki is, and compared to he has all uh, all for one. But you know, yeah, there there was a there will be a possibility that Deku will save Shigaraki, but he's like now's not the time for now, so we're going to retreat, and that's the end of the chapter. I'm like okay, all right, I see how this is going. So right now he can use twenty percent, a hundred percent. 1 million percent and now 120 <laughs> percent. You know, I always wonder if he can actually use like 50 percent. How strong do you think he'll be right now? I mean, compared to like 20 percent and 50 percent, he might be a twice as powerful as he was before, but right now, he is unbeatable, guys. He is really unbeatable at this point, and there's no way that anyone can stop Deku. <laughs> now that he has all these quirks, it's time to you know you know get used to that get, get used to that power you just used the second you use it so that way when the time comes when you take when you face off from one you'll be able to use it again so yeah all right guys that's it for today's video thanks for watching I look forward to see what happens in the next chapter if I don't hear any you know, you know more chapters when the season starts that's fine I'll just watch it the season and see for myself all right so like comment subscribe and I'll see you guys later.